Hey, what's up, traders? Trader Tim from eminimind.com bringing you another monthly market analysis. And we're going to take a look at the ES today. There's a lot to talk about as we approach new highs again on the ES. We have had a double top potentially, or essentially a double test. And uh, we're looking to break that high and get to new highs. And the drawing I have up in front of you is the 50% retracement uh, that we've been in. We've, we've tested it a number of times down here at that 2050, 2045 level. Uh, once over here, twice, and then a third time in this clump over here. So every time we come down to this level, we get a fairly strong bounce, as you can see with these tails. We've got the two big hammers here, this little tail down here. So there are buyers below us that have stepped in every time we've come down and pushed us higher. Uh, we tried once, didn't make it to new highs, we retested, had a little bit of a rally, retested again, and then we had kind of a wedge formation which we broke out of and we've drifted higher but it's been more of sideways consolidation as you can tell by the smaller candles. We've had uh, one, two, three large body candles here in the last month or so, but really most of the day's trading ranges have been very small. Uh, very small trading ranges, fairly long wicks to the candles. So the bodies and the candles are, uh, the bodies and the tails rather, are almost the same size and in a lot of cases the, the tail wicks are much bigger than the bodies. So that tells you that, you know, the, the bulls and the bears are, are kind of going after each other and no one is really winning. So a lot of intraday trading going on to kind of keep the market sideways. Uh, we've had a lot of news recently with the FOMC meeting announcement. A lot of earnings have come out. And one thing I want to talk about is, you know, as we look at the S&P here, just about to uh, break highs, the E-mini S&P, if we flip over to, uh, let's take a look at the Dow, uh, you know, not uh, not quite to the level that the S and P is that S and P is at uh, in terms of as close to highs. But more interestingly, the Nasdaq and the Russell, and these are two that normally lead the move. So the Nasdaq did make a new high, and uh, we've since pulled back to the prior highs, which are now acting as support. But the Russell is really uh, not anywhere near highs. And you can see that you know it's almost actually down at the bottom of this uh, rectangular consolidation pattern. So when we go deeper into some of the stocks that, uh, you know, the big names and stocks that make up the S&P 500, you know, if we look at Google, uh, w you know, in order for the ES or for the S&P to break out, we need the stocks within the S&P to break out. So some of these big names, uh, Google uh, sitting very well off highs, Apple uh, as well, uh, you know, not uh, not quite showing a very bullish formation. We've got some some bearish candles with some strong volume after those earnings. Uh, just some other bigger names, not necessarily in the S&P, uh, but Netflix is looking strong. Uh, we talked about uh, let's say Amazon's another one, uh, you know, holding a little bit from earnings, but really the uh, you know the Apples and the Googles and uh, we can take a look at uh, Microsoft. Um, Microsoft was another one that was holding after earnings, so you know a little bit of a mixed bag. It's not that all the stocks that we're looking at, some of the bigger names, are breaking out or about to break out. So as we go back to the ES, we can uh, you know, kind of use that to our advantage and say, well, you know, we want to see some of those individual stocks moving higher or breaking out. If we look to stocks like Apple and Google and some of the bigger names intraday, and if we see those stocks start to make new highs, then that could be an indication that the ES or the broader market could potentially be on its way to new highs. So we do have the larger 50% that does have a target at 2150s. We've been talking about that for a little while. Uh, we have a smaller daily 50% that has pulled back to about 2075s. 
and that has a target up at 2140. So roughly, you know, that 2150 level is what we're targeting on the ES. So we're looking for it to break out and then uh, take us higher to 2150s. And what I want to talk about uh, on a smaller time frame is I'm going to zoom in. We'll start with a 15-minute chart, and I want to talk about how we can use the first hour, first hour's range to give us an indication, you know, what kind of day we're going to be in. And if you look at, so these are 15-minute bars, and the the day, the trading hours only is starting here at the larger volume. So if we look at the first 15 minutes of trade, or f first hour rather of trade, we can see that the entire day following stayed within that first hour's range. Thus, range bound, choppy market, not a whole lot going on for the uh, day trader if you're uh, trading with the trend. Uh, if we back up a little bit here, we can you know, essentially go uh, day by day and take a look at you know, the first hour's range and once again, fairly small first hour's range, and the following days, or the following uh, bars rather, stayed within that range, you know, all the way, and this is Friday here, all the way into the lunch period. So not a whole lot of, you know, great opportunities to, uh, to get in and out intraday. Um, if we back up again to last week, what we start to see is first hour's range, you know, for the first hour and a half of the day, uh, we stayed within that range, uh, or actually for, for most of the day, through the, through the uh, lunch session, rather, we stay within that range. But look what happens when we break out, and uh, in this case, break down from that range. As soon as we break out of that first hour's range, in this case, the low, we have a nice uh, consecutive clean sell-off. So you can use this first hour's range almost as a way to bracket to use a, a sell stop below or a buy stop above. And you see that happening on a you know pretty consistent basis. We uh, have have a lot of days where we just kind of open up and uh, get sucked into the first hour's range, don't really do a whole lot for a little while, but then when we break down or break out of the range, you know, we get uh, at least a couple of point move in one direction that you can then capitalize on uh, with, getting, in, with uh, getting into the trade with some of that momentum. Another big one, uh, you know, or another uh, pretty good example here where we have the first hour's range like so, real big body candle. So the, the bigger the candle in the first 15 to 30 minutes, you know, that the bigger that first hour's range, the more likely that we are to stay within that first hour's range. And this one kind of breaks the, breaks the trend with a very large opening range, but then we did break out and then grind higher into the close. Back here was the reverse. We had a uh, a little bit tighter opening range, and then we broke down. And in this case, we actually had a nice, oops, nice 50% retracement. So we broke out of the first hours, broke out of the first hours range, and then we came back up and retested the 50%, and had a nice sell-off into the close. So it's it's something that uh, you know, looking at the first. 15, 30 minutes, and especially that first hour can really give us a good indication of where the markets are headed that day. And the, the longer we stay within that first hour's range, the, the more likelihood that you know we're just going to kind of chop around. There's not going to be a whole lot of great setups with a lot of follow through. But when we break out of that first hour's range, that's when we get into these nice trending days where you can really capitalize on these moves. And you know, at the, at, at the minimum, you can say, well, we're within the first hour's range, so you know, first we need to get a, you know, if you get in a trade and you're still within that first hour's range, you know, taking profits up near highs or lows can be a good opportunity to either, uh, you know, take half a position off or take some contracts off, and then you know, hold the rest in case we do break out. But um, 
when we do break down or break out of these first hour ranges, that's when you see the bigger trends that are consecutive. You can do things like trail your stop above the high of each candle until you get taken out. And it really doesn't take a whole lot of you know, nice trending moves to really make for a great day or you know, a great week. Uh, in the ES. So that's kind of what I look for to start off the day uh, on the more macro scale going forward this month. Uh, looking for the markets to kind of drift up towards the 2150s, but I really want to see stocks like Apple and Google and uh, you know some of the other big names moving higher and leading the market. So that's what I'm looking at for the, the next couple of weeks. I expect a lot of uh, a lot of good trading setups to you know continue to show themselves. And as always, if you have questions, uh, feel free to uh, shoot me an email, Tim at eminimind.com. Thanks a lot.